Hi, I'm Stacy, writer of the Blake Hill House DIY blog and co-host of True Tales from Old Houses, the podcast. You can find out more about both the website and the podcast, as well as something I'm calling the year of the window linked below. Today, I'm going to show you how to glaze a sash window. The first step is to prepare our glazing putty. Make sure you wear gloves and turn the container upside down on a spare board so that we can knead the whole container at once. We need the putty like this for two reasons. The first is that it incorporates the dry bits on top with the fresh putty underneath. Also, warm kneaded putty is soft and pliable and much easier to work with. It's relaxing and soothing, a lot like kneading bread dough. Once you've incorporated the old with the new, just tear off a nice chunk, probably more than you think that you'll need at this point. And then you can pick up the rest and put it back in the bucket for another time. Continue to knead this manageable piece until it's warm and soft from the temperature of your hands. Wearing some protective gloves, I'm gonna do a quick dry fit of the glass in my prepared sash. Now that I know my glass fits, I've taken it back out again, and we're going to do something called back bedding. Back bedding is putting a small amount of glazing putty all the way around the frame of our window, and then we're going to put our glass back in and create a nice tight seal between the front of the sash and the glass. And that's eventually going to prevent your window glass from rattling in that frame over time. We all know how that sounds in a really old window. Don't have to do anything too fancy here. It does stick on the gloves, which is kind of a pain. Uh, we're just sliding it in there. The eventual goal is to get it no thicker than about 1 16th of an inch. Our back bedding is in place and I've put the glass back into position in the frame. I've mentioned before that the back bedding should be no more than 1 16th of an inch or so. And I have a really fun trick to show you to get it even all the way around. You're gonna need a small sander and a rag. Now the goal with this, I'll show you how to do it, but the goal is not to sand or scratch your glass at all. We need the vibration to press the glass down uniformly all the way around the frame. Place your rag on your glass and your sander on your rag, and then we're gonna turn this sander on. And we're gonna work our way gently, making sure that the sander stays on the soft rag all the way around this piece of glass until we have it pressed in. a bit of experience you won't question the thickness of your back bedding anymore but while you're getting used to it you can gently lift up your frame remember there's nothing holding that glass in permanently right now so be careful and just give a little scrape we're gonna clean that off later Ooh, and you can see that we did a pretty good job here about 1 16th of an inch sure enough we're gonna leave all this excess here right now and we'll clean it up in a bit after we have this glass securely in the frame. Now it's time for glazers points. And they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are diamonds, some are triangles, some are more modern like the ones I'm gonna put in today. Uh, this house is 130 years old, so I've pretty much found most of the kinds of glazers points that are available. 
Sometimes I get surprised and find something new, but diamonds, triangles, modern, we've got them. These are my glazers points and I'll show you how to put one in. This type just sets right on the glass with the pointed part towards the wood. And then I'm gonna grab my little painter's tool here and just firmly but gently rock it back and forth until the two pieces that are upright are flush with the wood. Just like that. Now for a window this size, I'm gonna put approximately two per side. No need to go crazy. If you have a bigger window, it's perfectly normal to have three or four per side. But remember, you have your back bedding, you'll also have your glazer's points, and you'll have your final bead of glaze here. And all of that is gonna keep your window glass secure in the frame. Now that we have the glass secured with the glazer's points, I am gonna gently flip it over and tidy up this excess, but we need to get all of that off so that when we put our final glazing in, we can see whether or not we've tooled it too high and then it's visible from the inside of your window. That is an amateur move and we want a professional job. That's why we're gonna tidy up this side first. Now it's time to glaze the rest of the window. And there's a couple of methods that you can use. Uh, once again, you can just press a nice big chunk in with your hand, just like this, if that's easier for you. Or you can do something that I know as, and most people know as the kindergarten snake method, which is you can roll a piece between your hands, making a nice thick rope, and then pressing it along here. This time you want plenty of glaze. It's okay if it slops over the top. It's okay if it's too wide through here. I'm going to finish this row down this side and then I'll tool it and you'll see why it helps to have more than you need versus less than you need. Now, as far as what tool to use for glazing, you get to decide whatever fits good in your hand. Some people really like to use a putty knife. Other people are pretty well attached to their regular glazing tool. It doesn't matter, just choose what you like. I'm gonna start at approximately a 45 degree angle. I am gonna use the glazing tool just because a lot of you have that already. At approximately a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to pull smoothly back and you will see that a lot of the extra glaze comes off the top above the putty knife, or I'm sorry, above the glazing tool. And I'm gonna maintain that pressure all the way down. This is doing pretty well. It's dragging just a hair, but good putty makes all the difference in the world. If you buy a putty off the shelf at your local hardware store, assuming you have hardware stores like I do, you will not be happy trying to tool that glaze. It will never harden as much as you would like it to. It'll drag, it'll be just a big old mess. So one of the things we wanna check for, let me just do this a little bit smoother. And you know, sometimes you go, you take a pass and you think this just doesn't look good. So just do it again, uh, no big deal. Just start over, do it again. But we're gonna take a peek on the underside to make sure that we can't see our glaze, that it's not visible from the inside of the window. So let me, let me come back around and we'll take a peek. All right, we're a hair thick here and I can see it from this side. So instead of my 45, I'm gonna make just a little bit steeper angle and I'm gonna to tool it again. More experience, you'll get better at this, but sometimes it's just a bit of trial and error.
Our window is getting pretty greasy by this time, making it a little bit more difficult to see, but that extra tooling worked. Any excess that you see is just a bit of glaze that I need to clean up either on the inside, which is what you're looking at here, or on the outside. And we'll get to that. It looks pretty sloppy right now. I'm gonna continue all the way around, and then I'll show you how to do the corners. For a corner like this, the goal is to get it to look like two 45 degree angles coming together to form this 90 degree. I used to think that there was some special secret about doing this, but there really isn't. It's kind of a eyeball situation. <laughs> Give it a good look, cutting your 45 degrees, and then tool your glaze until you like the way it looks. Like so. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Now I will retool this here a little bit before I call it a day just to make it as smooth and professional looking as possible. And that's true going all the way around this glaze. I did it pretty fast for the camera, but I wanna tidy it all up and make sure it looks exactly like I want it to look before it cures. This is the top of a bottom sash. It's actually flipped upside down, but you'll see that instead of a regular track, down here there's a groove, kind of a routed groove that the glass slides into. I did press a little bit of glaze into there, but you can see how it's very inconsistent. So in order to get it consistent all the way around, I'm just going to press in anywhere that needs more glaze, and then I can clean it off just to make sure there's glaze all the way around and we don't get any moisture or insects or anything that squeeze between the glass and the window frame. To clean up, go ahead and scrape your tools against each other to get all of the glaze off of the edges. Now your glaze, remember when we incorporated all of it together, the top and the bottom, we had a little layer of skin at the top plus some oil that had separated. Now before we seal this up, we're gonna press it all nice and flat in hopes that we can keep air from reaching the bottom and maybe we'll just get that thin layer of skin again instead of bits and blobs of dried glaze. To keep your glaze as fresh as possible, put the lid on, hammer it down as tightly as you can, and you shouldn't have any problems. The very final step is kind of a fun one. We're gonna use something that window restoration professionals call magic dust. And what it does is it absorbs the oil and grease left behind by the glaze and it starts to speed up the skinning over process of our glaze. If you're doing a straight up restoration, then your magic dust is going to be whiting, which you can get at a variety of online window restoration stores. If you're open to something different, then you may also use powdered drywall. And I use it quite frequently because it's inexpensive and it's also readily available. Now, word of caution, drywall dust and whiting are both particulates, and it's very important that you wear a respirator while you are using them. If you have followed me for any length of time, you'll know that safety is really important. We think that nothing will happen to us, but repeated exposure to these particulates can cause a variety of lung conditions. So be safe. Before I put my respirator on, I'm going to describe the process because you won't be able to hear me while I'm wearing it. I have a large, soft, regular paintbrush. I'm going to dump quite a quantity onto my window and start gently tapping it into both the glaze and also 
sweeping away at those oily marks on my glass. I'm gonna use Magic Dust on both sides of my window, but I'm gonna start on the exterior, which has the bulk of the glaze and the oil. I'm going to leave it here to dry horizontally because the glazing putty that I used is meant to be used in a workshop setting. During the warm summer, you'd probably be ready to paint in about five days with this particular glazing putty. However, I'm in the cool basement, so it could take up to seven to ten days, maybe even a little bit longer before I'm ready to paint this sash. Thank you for watching this video of how to glaze a sash window. If you like old houses, and broken stuff and fixing things, then please do subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. And again, I'll link to my blog and I'll also link to the True Tales from Old Houses podcast. Thanks for watching.